What's going on everyone, it's Justin here, and today I've got a What's On My iPhone 15 Pro Max video where I show you guys the apps, the widgets, some of the tips and tricks I have on my iPhone, but generally speaking, what I use for a day-to-day -day basis as someone who owns a small business, but at the same time travels a bunch, takes a lot of content, and the phone is really my central hub. Before I jump into some of the apps, so I'm gonna quickly talk about some of the accessories that I have in my daily iPhone setup, and it starts with the headphones to the battery packs, the charger, chargers and the case I have. As someone who has used the Apple silicone case for many years in a row, it just got a little bit boring, but it's still a case that I revert back to when I don't want to damage my leather case. This leather case is from Nomad and it is the modern leather. It really has that cognac look that I absolutely love, which is a lighter tone, but they also have a darker horween leather as well. But I just love how even after a few trips, it's held up very nicely and has a good combination of leather material, but also a rubber material around the side. This actually borders the phone nicely. There are ridges for the grip and there's small details along the sleep wake button, but I would have liked to have seen it on the action button as well. And the bottom is relatively accessible for the ports, but I do find that some USB type C cables aren't able to fit in. But generally speaking, it gives me the perfect amount of protection that I need for my device. And so this is the case that I'm currently sporting on my iPhone 15 Pro Max. In addition to that though, my go-to truly wireless earbuds is the Apple AirPods Pro 2. This is the one with the USB Type-C because we've switched over to that as of this year. And as you open it up here, you can see pretty self-explanatory, but the case that it is in is the matching Nomad modern leather case. And this is like my cognac leather combination for my EDC, which you guys are going to understand why soon. Occasionally, I do also sport the Apple AirPods Max. I will admit it's been sitting on the shelf for quite a few years, but I just started bringing it back lately. And the spatial audio technology that Apple has implemented and continued to improve in their AirPods products and with the firmware updates has made the AirPods combination still the go-to I have, but we do try out a ton of truly wireless earbuds. I've also had my fair share of backup batteries, and this one right here is the Anker 533. It is 10,000 milliamp hours, and it's able to charge your phone relatively fast as USB-A and Type-C, and that combination is why I use it, because even though the iPhone 15 Pro Max has the best battery of any Pro iPhone that I've used to date, I still find that with the amount of usage that I have it at, it still needs to be charged around 6 or 7 p.m. on most days. The screen has an indicator that tells you the battery percentage, which is nice, but it is really portable for the 10,000 milliamp hour size, but I do have ones that are even smaller, but Anchor is a really great, reliable brand for charging technology, and the speed is a huge factor. As for my travel charger, this right here is the Nomad 35 watt one and has a single USB type C port. They also have a 65 watt one, and the reason why I like it is because it is so slim. So you just go ahead and flick out the prong here. You can see it is a low profile charger and I've already found a few good uses for it. So for starters, you take a look at my home screen and I would say that this is something that hasn't changed for many years now. It has remained quite simple and I find that with my app sorting, it really comes down to which apps I use the most often. When you see it here, I've got a few widgets that show the battery status of all my different accessories, including the AirPods, the phone, and the case. I also have the weather because we are constantly traveling and whether it is my hometown or all the different places in a given itinerary, I always like to keep track of that. And you'll notice that I actually use a lot of the stock apps. I don't go into all the crazy third-party apps. I've stuck to the same email app. I still use the Apple Notes app. And aside from stuff like Spotify, I've generally stuck to stock software. Spotify is my music platform of choice. I just found that it is something I gravitated towards. And even though I did try Apple Music for a bit, I still prefer Spotify. And wherever I am, whether it's in the home or office, I'm always streaming music to something. On top of that, Apple Notes has still been really good and I really appreciated the improvements that they made in the past couple years that make it a lot more collaborative. And so as a team, because we all use iPhone, we've just had every single thing within the Apple Notes. Beyond that, YouTube Studio is also very important because we're making YouTube videos. You wanna be able to track all these different things when it comes to video performance, the episode that you just uploaded, but they've also expanded the tools to allow you to change stuff such as thumbnails, um, titles, tags, and essentially be able to run your entire YouTube business and channel directly on your smartphone. The other apps are relatively boring. You have Facebook, X, Instagram, and YouTube. I do find that I watch quite a bit of YouTube videos, but I'm on Instagram the most, just to get inspiration of like travel, the next home projects, and also talking to a lot of my friends in the industry. That's the way that we communicate. 
Some of the other like home screen widgets are just the quick access apps that I'm using. And so wallet is used all the time, um, NHL just to check the scores. One of the most useful travel apps though is Turo. It's something that I've been using for so many years now and allows you to book your dream car on any given road trip, whether it is a fun sports car in the countryside or you're going on a winter road trip and need a rugged SUV. Maybe you're moving and you need a truck or you're just looking for a fun road trip car like my upcoming trip to LA where I just wanted a drop top Mercedes with amazing speakers to be able to drive around and enjoy the California sun in. It really comes down to your imagination and we've used Turo in so many scenarios over the years as customers and it has always been an amazingly enjoyable experience. You just go on the Turo app and find your drive and type in where you're going. So in this case, I was in West Hollywood and I was searching for a car for the day to just be able to bring around. You just have that freedom of picking what car you'd like depending on the price range. So on this upcoming trip to LA, I'm going to West Hollywood and I just select how much I wanna spend on a car. Maybe I want like a nicer car on this trip, a top rated host, and I can view all the results. And from there, all the options are shown and I can select where I want to pick it up on the map or also pay a fee to have it delivered to me. And so for this upcoming trip, I've actually gone with the Mercedes E-Class and it's something I'm really excited about because I drive a Mercedes right now, it's something I'm familiar with and yeah, I can like kind of take a look at the car here and what to expect and I mean, the drop top is just perfect. On past trips, I've also booked a BMW 4 Series because it's similar to the car that I had before but I was curious what the new model was like and that was a lot of fun. But on future trips, we're also gonna be doing a Rivian road trip to drive that electric truck for the first time. And so it's not only a great place to book an amazing car for your friends and family for a trip, but also a good opportunity to try out a car that you've always wanted to drive before you go ahead and buy it. Turo also has some amazingly fun curated experiences, which is something that I love doing. It's just great for like a date weekend. And one that I did recently was drive to table. It's a Michelin guide experience that not only guides you through a road trip of the favorite spots from some of the top chefs in the country, but also takes you to the Michelin star restaurant before ending the night at an amazing five-star hotel in your designated city. In my case, that was Vancouver, and it's a restaurant that I've heard so much about and have been struggling to get a reservation to, and it is an Asian and Italian-inspired meal that is Michelin star rated for the second year in a row. I picked up the Mercedes SUV and went to the three spots that the chef had listed, including Lynn Canyon and also Renzullo's Italian Market, before going to dinner, watching a hockey game, and checking in at the Fairmont Pacific Rim, which is one of the best hotels in Vancouver. It was a really fun day and curated experience. And Turo also has other experiences such as their collab with the Jonas Brothers where you can win a chance to have one of the Jonas Brothers personally hand you the keys to your Turo booking. I've also utilized Turo from a host standpoint though because we have a couple cars and to be honest, I'm traveling all the time and my cars don't really get driven that much. And so with Turo, I'm able to trust that I can safely and easily put my car out there and let somebody go ahead and book it and earn some money on the side, especially when I'm away. So our company car, the Audi Q8, has been on Turo for a while and it's been a great experience. We actually got bookings for a week in line with some of our luxury vacation rentals and with the host insurance coverage provided by Turo. The process was super simple. We wrote out the model, the VIN number of the car and submitted that and also took photos of the vehicle and its condition. And from there, you can set your price to what you believe is applicable. And it is essentially a really good way to not only offset, but also earn some income on your vehicle depending on what it is. So that has allowed us to justify the company car, to have a great car to utilize for work, but also book it out when we're not using it or on a long work trip. So on both sides of the Turo experience, I've had an amazing time using it. And if you guys wanna go ahead and check it out for yourself, I'm gonna drop a link down below and a huge thanks to Turo once again for sponsoring this video. I have the calendar and the weather on multiple windows because I find that wherever I am, I'm still trying to access that information quickly. But beyond that, battery once again. And when it comes to using a thermostat, my system of choice is the Ecobee. I've used the Nest in the past and I found it to be good, but I just didn't really want to be integrated in the Google Home ecosystem. And so I switched to the Ecobee recently and it has been really awesome. The widgets and everything are great, the reliability, the apps and the sensors, and it's just what I would recommend at the moment. Beyond that, as we move on to the next page, you'll see the Ecobee widget alongside Spotify. Being able to quickly access Spotify is amazing, but also using Dynamic Island, which has seen so many improvements over the years, has made the experience much more useful. And on the second page, you're gonna find a lot more of the creative apps. 
So here I have apps like CapCut. CapCut is how I edit all of my smartphone videos when it comes to reels or most of the time stories. I'm trying to stitch some clips together. It is simply the one that I found to be the easiest to use. It is made by TikTok. And yeah, you can see like these sequences that we have are literally just, I mean, iPhone clips that have been stitched together. You can change the resolution, the quality and everything. And it has a very similar intuitive interface on like the MacBooks. If you're coming from like Final Cut Pro or iMovie, you can add stuff like text, overlays, effects, templates, filters, and so much more. And so I find that CapCut is like a very easy option for those who are looking for an easy smartphone editing platform. And I also use Dropbox as my file system. I find that like Dropbox is just the easiest. I honestly really don't like Google Drive. And so when I have to send photos to my editors or creatives, I use Dropbox in many different ways. We have it to store all the files for like thumbnails, but I also have it for like video files when I'm trying to send it off to editors to allow them to add their files to my folder without taking up their space. And I also use Dropbox transfer all the time because that allows me to send files up to 100 gigs super easily. So after jumping around and trying a few things, I find that Dropbox is my platform of choice, similar to how Spotify is something I prefer over Apple Music and how I use Google Maps as well. So when it comes to one of the most important apps and programs that I use for operating my business, it has been Notion. For so many years now, you guys have seen me use Notion and even make dedicated videos about it, showing you guys the workflow that goes into organizing all of the content creation, sponsorships, business aspects, and so much more. And they recently introduced Notion AI, which is huge, being able to utilize AI features to create different things, such as emails, notes, and so much more within Notion itself. But they actually just announced the latest addition to Notion AI, Q&A. It's a revolutionary feature that provides instant answers to questions using information from across the Notion workspace, including meeting notes, different things that your manager may have set for you, as well as specific references. And I find that a lot of times I have a ton of information that I may have written down from meetings or just notes that I've left about certain videos and being able to use Q&A to reference that and have the information brought up right away can save so much time, especially for repetitive tasks. On a team setting, that is also very important because I often have notes for specific videos or campaigns. And I feel like I've written down that information before, but I just can't seem to find it right away. And the Q&A function really goes beyond traditional AI chatbots by understanding the business, previous decisions, and meeting notes to provide accurate and relevant answers to the question. It is really amazing how well it works because it can be used for both static and dynamic information retrieval from finding company policies to checking status of tasks such as videos, where they are and where they are in the process is very important to us. And at the same time, certain terms of contracts such as the integration length or the sponsorship deadline is something that we always ask on a day-to-day -day basis, especially when sharing the workspace with the team. It is really the ultimate assistance in combination with Notion and with Notion being so powerful as it is, implementing AI tools as well as features such as Q&A just make it so much more effective in becoming your assistant to your workflow. So if you guys wanna go and check it out for yourself, I'm gonna drop a link down below and a huge thanks to Notion for sponsoring this video. In terms of how I edit my Instagram photos though, I use Lightroom Mobile. I think Lightroom is amazing and I use it on my laptop as well, but I find that most of the photos that I edit are actually on the smartphone itself, which is very impressive because with the processing power of the iPhone, you are able to edit an entire batch on your phone when you're on the go and just wanna get like a nice Instagram story up. So some of the tools that I utilize, of course, come down to just like the basic settings of editing, but there's also really good smart settings as well that allow me to do masking on the go. So if I take a photo and I want to like mask out the subject, for example, then I'm able to just touch and hold and mask that out on the smartphone. And I'm also able to carry that process over on my computer as well. So I think like the improvements made to Lightroom have been amazing. I have my presets loaded on here and make the little modifications, but I find that I don't really even need a computer to edit photos with the mobile app right here. The wallet app is pretty self-explanatory and the Somfy app is for controlling the shades in my house. So I have these automated shades that allow me to control the shades from anywhere and they also have different sequences. So throughout the day, they go up and down, they change um, and they can also be tuned to sunrise and sunset as well. So that is like the full extent of my smart home. I actually don't have that much smart home aside from one more app and that is Govi. 
So the GoV actually has a light behind my TV and it is able to use that camera and scan what is on the screen and emulate the backdrop to the wall as well. You're able to change all the color settings, have it play to music, and it is just so much fun to use. And so, yeah, I've been using the Govi lights for quite a few months now, and it has worked really, really well. The next page, on the other hand, has all of my Notion pages just on a widget right here. And I also utilize Canva a lot of the times to create stuff such as pitch decks and presentation decks when graphics are needed. And similar to Lightroom, you can get a lot of what you need to do on your phone. Another creative app that I have is Planoli, and that allows me to like plan the Instagram feed and figure out which photo is going to go next and which orientation. And being able to preview that is super valuable because I always find that I post the wrong photo on the feed in the sequence. So yeah, being able to add photos in and shuffle it around is really great. And it's an app that I've used for so many years now because I took a long time to figure out what app specifically I wanted to use when it came to feed planning. As someone who makes YouTube videos, Frame.io is also a very valuable tool for allowing me to make feedback to my team directly from the palm of my hand wherever I am. So I do travel a ton and I always have somebody back home who is editing on the computer. And with Frame.io, I'm able to, yeah, like leave comments, draw on the screen, be able to do that on my iPhone or my iPad. So for any creative out there who is working with editors, I definitely recommend you check an app out like Frame.io. I also have the Instax Mini Link. And what's great about this is I'm able to connect it to the printer that I purchased and I just add any photo that I've taken, make a design and it'll look like it was an instant camera. So that is nice because I don't really like having my photos limited to just like an instant camera, but being able to have those memories both digitally and in an analog form is amazing. And that is why I went ahead and purchased the mini link and you can see some of the examples on a recent work trip. Milano is also a really good app for creatives and it goes in line with stuff like Notion and Planoli of being able to concept and draft different ideas. And it really is down to your imagination. You can do whatever you want. You can use it for interior design. You can also use it for like shot planning. I love using it for interior design specifically. And so I do have that app installed in case I have an idea that comes to mind and I want to just be able to put it down right away. Taylor is also a really good app. A lot of times you need to like screenshot a web page or something. And what I wanna do is to be able to, for example, screenshot this Christmas tree. Um, so I go like this and like this. And all I have to do is go into Taylor and it will find the last two screenshots and it will combine them into one long screenshot that you can then send to people. So that is really nice if you're trying to like screenshot a long page or article without having to take multiple screenshots. It's so easy and it's just one of those tools. Another tool that I also have built in is Two Stories. And that allows me to like share something to the stories such as my YouTube video in a very visually appealing form. So say we go to this video right here, today's unboxing of the Space Black MacBook. Um, I'm just going to hit Two Stories and it will take the thumbnail and everything and let me change the background, the colors and all that kind of stuff. And I mean, it looks amazing. So yeah, that's what I have um, to share stuff and I find it to be very, very handy. And those are just like the two weird widgets that I have. Other than that, I actually don't have many games or widgets or keyboard extensions installed. But otherwise, when it comes to apps on my smartphone, I've kept it relatively simple. And even though I have a lot of apps, thanks to the amount of storage on the device, I just find that I actually don't use that many and I don't play any games either. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you go ahead and drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and as always, I'll see you all in the next one. But until then, this is the What's on my iPhone 15 Pro Max for 2023.